Good morning. Welcome to Free Indeed Morning Moments. Glad you could join us again. Another great morning and another great weekend. And uh, brought, brought us again to Monday morning and the start of the week. And uh, we hope you had a great weekend. And we had a great weekend here bringing people to church, seeing people saved, seeing what God can do. On Saturday, was able to go out in the morning with one of our teenagers and we were able to lead a, a bus family's dad to the Lord. And that was a wonderful time. He asked the question, well, how then do I be saved? And I said, well, we can take care of that. And he trusted Christ as his Savior. What a wonderful time. And uh, we also uh, was able to go out. We had a tour group from Golden State Baptist College here this weekend. And we had to go soul winning with them. And I was able to knock on the door of a lady. And uh, named him uh, Emilia. And uh, she was very happy to trust Christ as her Savior. And it's a wonderful thing to see people saved. And uh, it's a sign of a church that is alive when souls get saved, when people get baptized. And I encourage you to hope you're in a church where people are getting saved and uh, where people are trusting Christ as their Savior. And it's just because it's 2023 does not mean that nobody can get saved. Uh, people still get saved. The problem is Christians don't go. And they don't go door knocking, don't go soul winning, don't go tell anybody. And, but uh, people get saved, they want to get saved if you want to go out and tell them. I'm going to bring to you a verse this morning, Exodus chapter 5, verse 22. I'm going to read into verse uh, chapter 6, excuse me. The Bible says, And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people, neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see with a strong hand that sh uh, hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. It's a very interesting when I read this the other day. And, I, and, and Moses came to God. God told Moses, Moses, I'm going to use you to bring Egypt, uh, bring the Israelites out of Egypt. So in Moses' head, he said, well, I'm just going to go down there. And I'm going to go, Aaron and I are going to go down there. I'm going to tell uh, Pharaoh, you need to let my people go. And Pharaoh's gonna, God's going to do something wonderful. And we're going to walk away and with Israelites in tow. And we're going to take them out of Egypt. But it didn't go as Moses planned. In fact, when Moses went down and stood before Pharaoh and said, I come before you from the Lord of hosts. And he said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, uh, yeah, right. And uh, in fact, not only did he say go to where Moses and Aaron go take a hike, but he said, give the Israelites more burden. Give them more things to do. Obviously, they got too much time on their hands. And Moses went back to God and said, God, what in the world? Instead of delivering your people, you gave them more burden. You gave them more struggle. And uh, the Bible tells us that, hey, Moses said, hey, you haven't delivered them at all. You didn't even do what you said you're going to do. And, and I can see God stop, Mo, uh, stop Moses and say, hey, hold on there, son. <laughs> hold on there. And uh, I'm going to bring Israel out. That Pharaoh is going to thrust them out. Pharaoh is going to force them and push them to leave. Just wait and see, my friend. My thing today I want to bring to you is the timing of God. The timing of God. Moses thought he would walk in, tell Pharaoh that, he wa that God wanted his people to go and that they would leave. That was not how God was going to do it. I'll say it again. It's not how God was going to do it. God had a plan and it wasn't Moses' plan. God didn't consult Moses on how he should bring the people out of Egypt. God was going to bring the people out of Egypt, but not with Moses' plan. Just because Moses had in his mind that God was going to do it a certain way, and then God did, and Moses was like, oh, well, I guess God doesn't, it's not going to bring them out. God failed. No, God didn't fail. We just, Moses just had his own mind made up. Moses just had his own plan that he thought God was going to follow. And God said, I got my own plan. You're going to follow my plan. I'm not going to follow your plan. You're going to follow my timing, Moses, not your timing. You're, I'm gonna, uh, you're going to follow what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it, not how you're going to do it. Number one, Moses thought God had made a mistake. My friend, when we come down to the point, where we think God didn't come through. We think, oh, God is late. God didn't do the work. God didn't uh, come through. And uh, the most reality is, is that it wasn't 
uh, uh, God's not going to follow our timing. He's going to follow his timing. God is never late. He is always on time. He's never early. He's always on time. We have in our minds that God's going to come at a certain place at a certain time, at a certain part of the day, and that's when he's going to come. If he doesn't come, God doesn't come through. But no, my friend, you don't tell God when to come through. God will come through at the exact time that you need him to come through. Not a moment earlier, not a moment later. And uh, but God doesn't make mistakes. God knows exactly when he needs to show up. And Moses thought God had made a mistake, but God knew exactly when he was going to show up. And it wasn't when Moses wanted him to. It was At that, that, that point, God was not going to deliver the children of Israel. Why? Because God's timing wasn't met yet. God says, not time yet. And I'll, my plan is going to work. Just trust the plan. Number two, God had his plan and God... Uh, Moses had his plan and God didn't follow it. This is what Moses thought. God, I have my plan here. You didn't fulfill it. You didn't do anything. Obviously, you don't want to bring the people out of Israel. No, 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 no. God said, I have my plan. God says, you follow my plan, Moses. And when he looks at our life, he says, hey, you follow my plan. You don't make up a, my, a plan that God needs to follow. You follow the plan God has. And you fall and, and, and submit to what God has. And God says, I'll work through you. I'll do a work beyond what you could ever imagine. Not in your timing, but it, but in my timing. Number three, God uh, was going to bring his people out. Not in Moses' timing, but his own. Again, when God works in your life, when God works in my life, he works on his schedule. He works on his time frame. It amazes me when we go soul winning, when I go soul winning, how on time God is. That God allows me to hit certain places at a certain time, right at the right moment that I need to be there. And uh, you can call it coincidence. I call it divine appointment from God. God knows exactly when I, where I need to be at a given, any given time. And my friend, God does wonders. We had a yeah, a couple come out and I led the wife to Christ about three weeks ago. Last week, she they both came and got baptized, and they came again this week. And so far, three weeks in a row. And uh, but that's called divine appointment. God puts you in the path, and God says, "I just want you to follow the path. Don't come up with your own path. Don't do what you think you want to do. Don't try to force God into your little box of life, my friend. You have to understand that God works on His timing." And you fall into God's timing. God, You didn't create God. God created you. You didn't create the life you're put in. God lets you be there. God puts you there. And God controls it. And God can do it. Whatever he wishes. No matter what. He doesn't consult you. He doesn't need to consult you. God didn't need to consult Moses about his plan. God was going to work his plan. And obviously we know what his plan was. The ten plagues went through Egypt. And the Bible says the Pharaoh thrust them out, leave. I don't even want you here. You're causing me too much problems. And uh, the Bible says they went out, not just leaving, but the Bible says the Egyptians gave them gold, gave them silver. Man, a wonderful thing because God did that. There was not a chance that Moses was going to take the glory, that Aaron was going to take the glory. God got the glory. God brought them out. And they sang all the way that God had brought them out when they crossed the Red Sea. The horse and the rider had God cast into the sea because God did it. And his timing, his plan, all God. My friend, when it comes to your life, it's not going to be you that gets the glory. You want something great to happen? It's not going to be you that's going to get the glory. It's going to be God. And so God's going to work in his time to change you, to make you, to bring you and place you in the, place you in the right path, right place that you ought to be. But the timing of God, trust the timing of God. Don't put God in your box and, um, and think that he made a mistake. But let your, uh, put yourself in the place where God can use you. Put yourself in the place where the t you, you're, you fit right into the timing of God. Because God's timing is a whole lot better than your timing or than my timing. Well, that's a blessing this morning. I hope that'll be a blessing. If I can do anything for you, please let us let me know. And uh, we got our next service, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Love to see you. If we can do anything for you again, please let me know. And I want to be a help to the best that I can. Have a great day and God bless.